Hello and welcome to this updated video guide for completing the thousand moors of Totorak normal in Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. My name is TSDS and in this video you'll learn everything you need to know to poison your party. On average this dungeon will take roughly 20 to 25 minutes to complete so let's dive in. The first part of this dungeon revolves around collecting a number of little green Magitek photo cells and you'll find your first one right at the start next to a decision. Interact with the photo cell to collect it and take note of the door that's likely behind you. The decision is whether or not you choose to go through that door as this affects something later on, although not in a way that hugely matters. Inside the door you'll find an archway made of webs. Later in the dungeon you'll find a lot of these. When you go close to one it'll suck you and anyone close enough forward and create a wall blocking the way back. This wall can be attacked and destroyed, but it's a lot cleaner if your party groups up as they go through these. Once you go past this webway, some mobs will spawn to clear them out. The reason to do all of this is because there's another photo cell in here, but I'll explain how this is optional later in the guide. Once you're done, head back to the initial area and continue into the dungeon. It's here you'll find a fork in the road with two pathways to choose from. This 100% doesn't matter and only serves to spice things up a bit if you run this dungeon quite a lot, so pick one and keep collecting the photo cells as you make your way through. Eventually, you'll hit the first boss line and find another photo cell in the room, taking your count up to 4 or 5 depending on whether or not you went through that door at the start. Here, you'll find a glowing blue Magitek terminal which will spawn the boss when going near it. The first boss, Koela Ninetales, looks nothing like the Pokemon. It'll periodically cast an AoE poison cloud on itself, poisoning anyone near so the healer and ranged should try and keep their distance. An important factor to how often it casts this is whether or not the boss's target is poisoned. This means healers should actually refrain from curing the tank's poison and should only remove it from other party members, otherwise the boss will spam this move wasting your efforts. When it's dead, interact with the Magitek terminal to open the way forward. Doing so consumes four Magitek photo cells, so as you fight your way down to the second boss, you should start collecting them again. Note though that this time, some will drop from slain Warden's Whip monsters that you'll fight along the way, so make sure you keep an eye out. These Warden Whips have a similar AoE poison attack, but healers can cure the tanks as well this time as the poisons stack and can be a bit of a pain to deal with if your group is quite melee heavy. Eventually you'll have another webway to deal with and once you arrive at the second boss line you'll find it's blocked by a sticky web. Just destroy the web and head through. Note that if you didn't enter the room at the beginning of the dungeon, you won't have enough photo cells to spawn the boss. In this case, you have to first head up the pathway you didn't come down from and grab a photo cell from there. Getting the photo cell in the room at the start, instead of now, is basically as long as it's short, but most groups will skip that room which can cause confusion once you reach the second boss and find that nothing happens. Once you've got four photo cells, you can spawn the boss by moving near the terminal. The second boss, Koela Ninetales, again, is the same boss. Again. Just repeat the tactics and at 50% health, two Warden's Whips will spawn. Tanks should grab them, but DPS should just focus on the boss. When it dies, so do the adds. When he's dead, interact with the Magitek terminal to open the way again. By now, we're done with the photo cells and begin the long and sticky descent towards the final boss. This whole part of the dungeon is covered in sludgy green goop that'll slow your movement speed when going through it. Along the way, you'll encounter many webways, so should remember to watch where your group is each time before getting near them. You'll also come across a whole bunch of fleshy pods. These basically look like large egg-shaped spider webs and will be positioned behind all sorts of twists and turns to catch you out. The fleshy pods don't move, but will explode when approached by a player. This will AoE poison everyone in the explosion. As they have like 2 HP, you can detonate them yourselves with any attack, so players with ranged attacks can clear the way. That said, the poison honestly doesn't do that much damage, so you can just ignore them completely and detonate them with your face. Blowing them up from afar just makes you look cooler. After quite a long way, you'll find the abassination chamber door, so crack it open and keep going. I only point this out to highlight the webway straight afterwards for the tanks. 
when you go through this one, two mobs will spawn. One in front of you, but one will spawn behind you next to the webway. Most tanks miss this because you get sucked forwards and it will likely start beating on the healer. Make sure you grab it and you'll have comms for days. Keep going and you'll reach another sticky web. Take it down and head through to the final boss room which is surrounded by that sticky goop. Here you arrive at an elevated platform overlooking the final boss, Graphius. Jumping off the edge will suck you and your nearby group over to the boss and pull it, causing a bunch of fleshy pods to spawn around the edges of the room. While you can kill these fleshy pods to open up more floor space, it doesn't really matter, so focus on the boss. Graphius has a long and narrow frontal attack to avoid and will occasionally summon two adds to help him out. Tanks should grab these and DPS should take them down. However, the next time they spawn, the boss will likely be so low that you can ignore them. He'll also target a random player with sticky web which will spawn another fleshy pod at their location. Again, the fleshy pods ain't all that, so you don't usually need to care about this one. At about 45% health, you'll get the message that the skin has fallen from the boss's tail. This causes his tail to glow pink and enables Graphius to start covering the room in poison. I don't need to explain why this is bad news, so make sure you change your target to his tail and burn that instead. Tank should also swap to his tail to maintain aggro and should make sure they move the boss out of the poison to allow melee to continue fighting. Once the tail goes down, swap back to the main body. It's here melee can pop a limit break with ranged doing it instead if no one else is doing it. Ignorable adds will probably spawn so just keep nuking Graphius and here go down. And that's all thousand mores of Totorak. If you've enjoyed the guide, then let me know, and if there are any other guides or perspectives you would like to see, then check out my channel, or feel free to ask me to create one. Thank you for watching, and good luck.